I'm Doug with the Bob Ross Company and I'll be showing you the Bob Ross Wet on Wet technique today. If you can see here on the canvas I've got a coat of a liquid white oil paint and you'll notice that you can see that because the canvas is slightly gray. The Bob Ross canvas are tinted gray in the gesso process to show that. So just a real quick coat of that, very thin, 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 even coat. And what this does is it makes it easy for the paint to move, blend right on the canvas makes the process quicker and simpler. If I want to put in a little bit of a sky color, I've got a nice pretty phthalo blue here. And just quickly crisscross that in. If you notice, I've got the Bob Ross brushes. It looks like a house painting brush, but it's not. It is a natural bristle brush made specifically for this technique. We use Bob Ross odorless thinner to clean them. So I've got a nice little instant sky there. I think maybe I'd like to have some water today if I just pull the brush horizontally. I can get the hint of a little bit of a pond or lake here in the painting very, very quickly. And how about some clouds? I've got a Barbaros fan brush. We have different size fan brushes. This is a number three. We also have a six. I've got the full a range of colors here, the full array of colors for, for Bob Ross. We have 14 colors, including a, a mix that we've made that makes things simpler called Mountain Mix. But we've got darks to light highlight colors. Here's a little bit of titanium white on a fan brush, and with this I can make a little quick cloud here. And these brushes are fairly large, so we can cover a lot of ground quickly. We can give it a little soft blend here with this. Just kind of soften it down and move on. I also have the Bob Ross knife here today. Now this is the large knife. And I'll be using some of the mountain mix to make a little bit of a base for a mountain. And if I just use the shape of this knife to block in my mountain, I've got an instant shape there. I can then take the one inch brush, pull that base color out, and soften it a little bit, and I'm good to go. If I take a little bit of titanium white, a small roll of titanium white on the knife, just cut across like you see Bob do on the show, and just ever so gently just let it go down the face of that mountain. Got a little bit of a hint of some snow. And just like that. So if I take a little bit of the phthalo blue and the white and mix it together, that'll give me a nice shadow color. And this will give a little bit of uh, more depth to the mountain. Make it a little less flat. And just pull the other direction, get a little bit of a shadow going there. Just that easy, just that easy. So we've got a mountain in there. Maybe we need a little bit of a foothill. I'll take some of this mountain mix, which is a, a combination of quite a few of our dark colors. Maybe throw a little bit of sap green in there. I don't know. And just tap in a little bit of a foothill area here. I can pull some reflections down into the water with the same brush. I can even pull up little treetops. Like so. If I take a little bit of our Barbaros liquid white, which is what we coated the canvas with to begin with, and mix a little of that into the titanium white, cut across, get a tiny little bead of paint on the bottom edge of that knife, I can put a little water line in. And that'll be a separator between the land and the water. So maybe we need a happy tree. Bob's always talking about happy little trees. Let's do that. This fan brush, <clears throat> You really don't know, need to know how to draw or paint with something like this. It is designed specifically to give us a nice tree shape if you just use it properly. So I've loaded the brush with a good dark color and then just use the bristles of that brush and tap down slightly to create the dark silhouette of an evergreen tree, which I'll highlight here in a second. I can continue a little bit of land underneath that so it's not just floating, but just tapping in with my one inch brush. And I've got it sitting on a grassy knoll. If I wanted to highlight that evergreen tree, I can just take a little bit of this cad yellow. I did dip into some of the titanium white just to soften up the paint slightly. This technique depends on a, a dry, dry, heavy paint underneath and then a, a thinner or less or lighter consistency paint on top. 
and then that lighter consistency paint sits right on top of the drier paint and won't mix and become overly muddy. So I can just tap on some nice little highlights there going down. I think maybe we need some, some little bushes here at the base of this, which I can pop some highlight color on here in a sec. Touch a little bit of the liquid white, go into a nice highlight color, maybe a little bit of this yellow ochre, a little cad yellow, maybe even a little Indian yellow too. Pop a little highlight on that. And how about highlighting this grass a little bit? And you're done. So that quickly, you can go from zero to something. We've got a sky, we've got clouds, we've got a nice highlighted mountain, little foothill area, Bob Ross happy tree, little bush in there, and some grass. And you really can paint that quickly. You can take up to three to four hours to do a painting. This liquid white under there remains wet so that you can continue to work and blend and move with it. But our technique really is based on starting in the background, going to the middle ground, and then the foreground, and never going back. You'll never see Bob go back on the show. He just moves forward until he's done. And he was always done in 27 minutes for the taping of the show. Very quick, very easy technique, and a heck of a lot of fun. And even if you've never painted before, you can get something close to this. In maybe your first session at home, if you bought one of the Bob Ross Master Sets, you can follow the directions which are in the Master Set and come up with something like this. But thanks.